solar storm warning. Experts urge for more protection or prepare for a technical blackout. Sean Martin Express UK. Scientists are warning that humans need to prepare better for huge solar storms, which could devastate technology on Earth. The, the system that they have basically now is to shut down everything so that they don't get fried by the overloading of electricity. The European Space Agency is preparing to send its Lagrange satellite into space. This will happen next year, and Lagrange will be used to monitor space weather, such as solar storms coming from the sun. But well, we already have this. We have no way doing this. And uh, solar storms are when the sun, of course, releases a barrage of particles from its surface, the solar flare, and they're flung into deep space with these flares. And usually these storms are not dangerous, most commonly result in northern or southern lights, and we see them if we're far enough north or south, but sometimes the stream of particles can be so huge that it can cause Earth's atmosphere to expand, and as they heat the outer atmosphere of our planet, that happens, and as the atmosphere expands, satellite signals make it much more difficult to reach the ground, potentially leading to a lack of GPS navigation, mobile phone services, satellite TV, and the like. But also, the surge of these particles can lead to high currents in the magnetosphere, which in turn leads to higher than normal electricity in power lines, and thus resulting in electrical transformers and power stations to blow up, blow out, and th therefore we have no power. Now we have the South Atlantic anomaly too, and you notice that every time the ISS or our satellites go over that area, uh, you notice in the live feed of ISS that you get static and then they turn it off. Uh, and also satellites that flow over that, fly over that area turn off because they don't want to have, for some odd reason that happens there, the South Atlantic anomaly, and they have to turn off and they switch back on when, once they're out of it. Now the recent survey said if there was a tech blackout as a result of a huge solar storm, it could cost global authorities as much as uh, $35 billion a day. Now, researchers want uh, to send the Lagrange satellite in more closely to observe the sun, observe solar flares, how they act, and how we can better prepare for a huge solar storm. Well, we know how they act. All right, you know, why spend money doing that? You have to do something to protect our electrical equipment and the transformers. Now, Lucy Green, who is a professor of physics, and Robert Wicks, who is lecturer in space risks, uh, they're both at the University College in London. They wrote an article uh, on the conversation, extreme space weather storms now feature on the national risk registers of many countries as one of the greatest natural hazards. Responding to extreme space weather can take many forms, they say, but the best protection is to be prepared. And they go on to explain, if we know a major space weather event is about to happen, then satellite operators can put satellites into safe mode to ride out of the storm. Meanwhile, electricity grid operators can stabilize the grid by reducing repair work and asking high usage customers such as factories to reduce their activity. They can also keep a close eye on the performance of the high voltage transformers at electricity substations in order to make sure that they're not overheating. Now, the biggest storm that we know so far was the Carrington event. It occurred in September 9, uh, 1859. And during that solar storm, the sun unleashed a series of powerful solar flares that were so strong the telegraph operators' offices experienced surge in electricity, and that resulted in the some building, the wires setting, being set on fire, and even the buildings being set on fire. And the storm was so powerful in southern the southern auroras could be seen as far north as Queensland and the Aust and uh, in Australia, and the northern auroras were noted, <coughs> sorry, as far south as you won't believe it. And the northern lights went as far south as Cuba. So you can understand how uh, huge that was. Now, in, in our space weather, spaceweather.com, we see the condition of CMEs, coronal mass ejections. They say CMEs are coming in, maybe. 
Earth is about to be sideswiped by a pair of coronal mass ejections, maybe. The story begins March 8th, when today that is in the sunspot AR2734 erupted, producing a C1 class solar flare. The NASA Solar Dynamics Observatory recorded the blast. And now the C1 class is, uh, are, they're small, with few noticeable consequences here on Earth. Uh, so nothing to worry about. C1 to C9 is nothing to worry about. Then you have the medium, and then you have the X. It's the X really, and the medium. It's the X that you have to worry about. They're big, they're more major events that can trigger planet-wide radio blackouts and long-distance radiation storms as well. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.